Okay, so imagine for a moment uh, seeing beyond the limits of your own eyes, not just, you know, normal light, but the invisible signals that are constantly crossing our world. That's a bit like a superpower, right? Well, today we're taking a deep dive into exactly that. Some pretty groundbreaking contact lenses. The aim to actually let human eyes perceive radio waves. Yeah, it's um, it's truly a radical shift we're talking about. Human perception. You know, our natural vision, as you said, it's remarkably constrained. We only see this tiny, tiny slice of the whole electromagnetic spectrum, what we call visible light. Everything else from the longest radio waves to the shortest gamma rays, well, it's just a blind spot for us. We normally need pretty complex instruments to even detect it. Right. And this is where it gets really fascinating. This new development, it fundamentally redefines that natural boundary, doesn't it? We're talking about augmenting our vision. Right. Literally seeing frequencies that previously, well, you needed radar dishes or big radio antennas to pick up. So to really get our heads around this, we're going to peel back the layers today. We'll look at how it works, what it could unlock, the, uh, the big hurdles still in the way, and maybe most importantly, the really profound ethical questions this brings up, you know, about privacy, how we see each other, everything. A good starting point is just remembering our world is just awash in electromagnetic energy yeah. all the time. And like we said, our vision is naturally locked into this tiny sliver. This tech, though, it radically expands that. It lets us perceive those radio wave frequencies blanketing everything, frequencies that, well, until now have been totally invisible. It is wild to think about all that information just constantly flowing around us, and we don't see any of it. So how do they actually pull this off? What's the core science making these lenses possible? Uh, the magic, really, it lies in the materials and how they're put together. We're talking about incredibly sophisticated engineering here. you got specialized nano antenna arrays. Okay, like microscopic radio antenna. Exactly. Integrated with graphene-based sensors. Graphene <laughs> is key because it's incredibly conductive, flexible, and thin, like atom thin. And then you add metamaterial coatings. These are specially engineered materials. Right, the ones that can manipulate electromagnetic waves in weird ways. Precisely in ways natural materials just can't. And it's the synergy of all these advanced fields all miniaturized onto a thin, flexible contact lens. Interesting. So, okay, if I put these on, I wouldn't just see like a messy swirl of invisible signals, right? How does the lens or maybe a connected system make that raw radio data actually meaningful? Is it like a heads up display? That's the key part. The lens itself acts as a passive radio receiver, but the visualization that involves either tiny micro displays built right into the lens or maybe even retinal projection, which is more subtle. Then you have an AI, either on the lens itself or connected wirelessly with super low latency. Ah, the AI does the heavy lifting. Exactly. It interprets signal strength, direction, maybe interference patterns, and translates that complex data into images our brains can actually understand. It's about transforming the invisible into a sort of... Um, comprehensible augmented layer on, mm -hmm. on top of reality. Okay, with that in mind, the capabilities they promise, they really are unprecedented. Suddenly that sci-fi dream of seeing beyond walls. It's not just theory anymore, is it? Not at all. Radio waves, unlike visible light, they have this unique property they pass right through solid objects, many solid objects anyway. So that allows for detection of things, people, electronic devices, even if they're hidden behind obstructions. Just think about the immediate implications for, say, situational awareness. It's a total game changer. What specific scenarios come to mind? Where does this offer a real edge over maybe existing tech, like thermal imaging or acoustic sensors? And the sources also highlight real-time signal detection, like visualizing Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, RFID signals as they happen. That's incredible. Incredible. Well, yeah, think about a smoke-filled building for first responders. Yeah. Thermal imaging might struggle with extreme heat or just really dense smoke. Mm. But a radio wave lens could potentially pierce right through that, locating people by their phone signals, maybe even faint radio emissions from their bodies. Mm -hmm. Or for the military, it's about detecting hidden enemy communications or maybe IEDs emitting specific frequencies. And yeah, seeing wireless networks in real time, that just gives you a whole new layer of information about your environment. And the biomonitoring aspect you mentioned earlier, that's fascinating too. Detecting signals from medical implants inside the body. Exactly. Or think about enhanced navigation. Imagine literally seeing signal strengths in a city. Maybe directional cues to follow the strongest Wi-Fi signal right to the coffee shop you're looking for. Or, you know, visually troubleshooting a dead zone. It sounds almost too good to be true, doesn't it? Which I guess leads us to the next point. Like any truly revolutionary tech the path to making these lenses widespread. 
It must be full of technical challenges. What are the biggest flittles here? You hit on a key one right there. How do you power something so tiny that's constantly working right on your eye? Power supply is a major hurdle. We need incredibly energy efficient designs, maybe wireless charging somehow, or perhaps even tiny photovoltaic layers built into the lens itself to harvest ambient light. Hmm, okay. And then there's the huge task of data interpretation, making sense of all that raw radio frequency data. How do you convert that into something visual that's actually intuitive for the human brain? That sounds like a massive cognitive and computational challenge. It really is. We're talking about a huge real-time data interpretation problem. The AI doesn't just need to process the raw RF data. It needs context. It needs to distinguish a Wi-Fi signal from, say, a pacemaker's signal or identify a person through wall interference patterns. It's not just visualization. It's intelligent interpretation. Right. Context is everything. And on top of all that, there's the sheer difficulty of miniaturization. Mm -hmm. We have to cram all the necessary bits, the antennas, the sensors, the display components into a comfortable, safe contact lens. That's a huge engineering feat. And for that real-time visualization, you can't have any lag, none at all. So latency and bandwidth must be critical. You'd need super fast onboard computing or incredibly reliable low latency connections to the edge or cloud for processing. Absolutely. But despite these um, significant hurdles, the potential applications, they really are transformative across so many sectors. When I think about the potential here, my mind immediately jumps to military and defense. How do you see this fundamentally changing things like battlefield awareness? Oh, it could absolutely revolutionize it. Beyond seeing through walls, which is huge. Imagine forces navigating in zero visibility conditions, dense fog, pitch black night, where they can literally see the electromagnetic landscape. They could detect enemy radio signals, maybe even the faint EM signatures of hidden vehicles or personnel. And healthcare, we touched on it, but that constant monitoring of smart implants. Yeah, or detecting wireless biosensors in real time. It offers continuous diagnostics without invasive procedures. That's a big deal for chronic conditions. For telecom and networking too, the efficiency gains seem obvious. Engineers could just look around and visually troubleshoot signal interference, find blind spots, pinpoint hotspots in real time. That would be invaluable. Absolutely. And think about search and rescue. This could fundamentally change how we locate survivors after disasters. Detecting signals from phones or other devices, even buried under rubble or deep inside a collapsed building. It could drastically cut down search time, save lives. Or in smart cities, yeah. you could have these real-time overlays of signal maps, maybe public connectivity status, IoT device status, huh. all just visible around you, like a constant live data stream piped directly into your perception. Yeah. It's mind-bending. It is. However, this incredible power, the ability to see everything and potentially through everything, it also leads us straight into a really significant ethical discussion, yeah. the ability to peer through walls, detect signals. It raises some very serious societal questions, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Beyond the obvious seeing through walls privacy issue, what's really unsettling is how this could blur the lines between public and private space in totally new ways. Our Wi-Fi signals, our Bluetooth devices, they constantly leak this sort of invisible data about our private lives, mm -hmm. making that visible. That transforms accidental leakage into potential direct observation. It's it, it feels like more than just surveillance. It's a fundamental shift in our informational boundaries. It absolutely is. Is. And you also have major data security risks. Imagine hackers getting into these visual overlays or someone broadcasting sensitive signal maps maliciously. This tech really demands we take a fresh look at our existing privacy norms, which probably aren't equipped for this. And the military angle again. If one side gains this huge tactical advantage, others will rush to catch up or counter it. You could easily see it accelerating an arms race and, you know, augmented warfare tech. Which brings up a critical question. How do we even start to build frameworks to prevent misuse? It really underscores the urgent need for robust legal and ethical guidelines. These need to be developed alongside the technology, not after the fact, hmm. to ensure it's used responsibly. Because without that, the risks really could outweigh the benefits. So the big question then, when will we actually be able to you know, see the invisible? What's the real world outlook for these lenses? Well, the sources suggest it's still very much early days. Mm -hmm. That's important to remember. While there have been some promising lab demonstrations, and yeah, the military is researching it, commercial adoption is still some way off. Right. I saw projections around, what, five to 10 years, which somehow feels both ages away and incredibly close. That timeline really depends on a few key things happening. You need regulatory approval especially since these would likely be classed as medical-grade wearables. That takes time. 
You need to figure out truly cost-effective mass production. And crucially, you need public acceptance. How will society adapt to this level of, well, pervasive vision? That's a big unknown. But the good news, I suppose, is that the underlying tech is moving fast. Flexible electronics, nanofabrication, biocompatible materials. These fields are advancing rapidly, so that could definitely accelerate the timeline, maybe faster than we think. Indeed. It's fair to say these contact lenses, the ones allowing humans to see radio waves, they represent a truly revolutionary leap, a paradigm shift in wearable tech. It really does blur that line between biology and technology, doesn't it? Transforming the human eye into a kind of multispectral sensor, making that vast, invisible world of electromagnetic signals, that ocean of data around us, suddenly visible. And if in this a big re if, if it's managed responsibly, this technology genuinely holds the potential for safer cities, smarter networks, maybe even entirely new dimensions of human perception. Which leaves us with a final thought to ponder, doesn't it? As our senses potentially expand into the invisible, how might our understanding of privacy, connectivity, maybe even reality itself, how might that fundamentally shift? It's certainly a lot to think about.